Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So last March, in uh, March of uh, 2021 actually, I did a review of a Thinkware dash cam, the Q800 Pro. So I did an install and review and then came back after six months of using it. And it's uh, worked out really good. It's kind of a high-end dash cam, not a, not a cheap one in any way. I think they're made in Korea and they have pretty good distribution throughout North America. Uh, so they contacted me last month and asked if I would uh, review one of their new offerings, uh, which is the X800. And uh, the thing that made me want to review it was it's a little different than the other camera. This one actually has a, a touchscreen display. The other one used a Wi-Fi app instead. But what really intrigued me is it can be hooked to a video multiplexer box and then you can add more cameras. Um, you can add, I'm going to add side cameras and a rear view camera. Um, you can also in, install an inside camera or an inside view. Anyway, I picked the, I think it was the multiplexer bundle number two. Yeah, so it includes the multiplexer box here and then two side cameras and a rear camera. And uh, one thing about the rear camera comes with 20 meters of cable which is uh, over 60 feet um, long so I thought this would be a good one to review for for people that have motor homes and vans and class C's that sort of thing if they're looking for some extra security around the vehicle because it will record all the different cameras uh, one caveat though is the the front camera will record uh, the front view but the the other three will record in kind of square boxes you'll see when i when i get to my footage anywhere anyway let's uh, show you what's included with this so here's all the stuff that was included in the three camera kit at the heart of it is the x800 dash cam that they've just released brand new model and you can see there's a mount there that uh, uses 3m tape to stick onto your windshield now the Q800 Pro did the same, and I haven't had any problems. It uh, hasn't fallen off or anything like that, so that, that seems to stick pretty good. Anyway, that's the main windshield dash cam, forward-facing. And then over here, we have two side cameras, right there. And they're made of metal. Same deal, they're going to 3M onto the side of the vehicle. And they have kind of a flat wire, I guess, that can go between the, the door seam. We'll get to that when I start installing it. And there's a couple extension wires because all this stuff has to be wired into what they call a multiplexer, video multiplexer box. That's what that is. And it has uh, dip switches and a plug. So you set it to how many cameras you have between one and five cameras. And then this thing plugs into it and the cameras plug in there and it hooks up to power. And we have another extension wire. I imagine that goes up to the main dash cam. Over here we have a GPS, external GPS tracker that's going to plug into this camera up on the windshield. So this thing doesn't have the GPS built in, unlike my uh, Q800 Pro had a, a GPS built in. And we also have a hardwire cable. So that's going to be for this uh, camera, it's going to be hardwired into the vehicle. And what that does, instead of plugging into a, a cigarette lighter type socket you hardwire it straight in so that you can hook it to intermittent power auxiliary power um, or uh, constant power so that when it's wired into constant power the system will know to go into parking mode and kind of record 24 7 or do motion recording that sort of thing and then last we have the rear camera that i'm going to have this is external infrared camera so it has a little infrared light on it to light up at night and then has some mounting hardware and a big long cable because it'll be mounting at the rear of the vehicle. So we have to run it outside and underneath the vehicle into the back. I'm, some people will put it on the roof line or something like that. I'm going to actually put it underneath my bumper. It'll be kind of out of the way, kind of hidden, but it'll still give me a, a good view of the back and monitor the back of the vehicle. Anyway, lots of stuff to install. So uh, let's get to it. I'm going to install it in my 2018 Ram 3500 truck. I've pulled my dash apart on my Ram truck. It's pretty easy. A couple screws and nothing totally unclips. And then I just have some connectors to undo, move it out of the way. And uh, I have a tradesman model type truck, so I don't really have a lot of uh, extra 
junk back here. So I have quite a hollow cavern to deal with. It's kind of an advantage not having the big um, display center in your truck. But uh, so all vehicles are going to vary. You're just going to have to uh, figure out what's best for you. There is some videos. Thinkware has a, a video channel on YouTube and they kind of have a different installation uh, videos that you could watch. But I'll show you what I'm going to do. I have sort of an existing system here because I have quite a few things already wired in. I already have the the Q800 Pro um, dash cam. You can see it up there that I installed about a year ago. It's been working fine, so I just got to. I think I'm going to actually leave it and install. Have two of the two dash cams installed at the same time, and kind of figure out which one I want to use going forward but at least I'll be able to demo this one by installing it. So what I had done for the install of the, the hardwire cable, that's what these two fuses are here. And red goes to switched power and yellow goes to constant power. Now the yellow is going up into here and behind my radio, I found a, a memory wire for the radio that's always, always has voltage on it even when the, the truck is turned off. So I wired into that and then the red got connected to these other reds. Um, one is for my rear view RV camera, um, rear monitor backup camera. Another is for my GPS. I have a Garmin GPS. And then we also have another red wire here that's for a, an inflatable lumbar support in the seat. So I have them all coming in and connecting to power. And then they all go through a wire and they were spliced into the 12 volt power socket for the truck. You can see that actually sits down there and plugs into there. So that's a switched power. The key symbol tells you that when you turn the truck off about 20 seconds later, that loses power, which is perfect for my needs. So all I got to do here is uh, install the multiplexer. I'm going to have lots of room, so I'm going to be able to uh, bury that way back in there once I install it. And then it has a wire that you need to connect. There's a yellow wire, which will go to that yellow wire. That's your constant parking power. You need a constant power so that it can, all the cameras can record while you're in parking mode. And then there's also a ground wire that usually you, would, you could go to a, a metal piece, but I'm going to snip it off and connect it to the, the grounding wire from the, the 12 volt power over here. I'm also going to run a second set of power uh, parking uh, or hard wire for the new dash cam. I'm just going to parallel it with everything there. And then it runs over there and it will run up along the pillar there and then through the the headrest like I did before. So first things first I'm going to install this multiplexer box because I want to be able to test all the cameras and make sure they're all working. I'll be able to just hook it in here and test them just here in the cab. So there we go. I have my grounds all tied together here. I have my switched 12 volt accessory 12 volt powers all here. And then the yellow is all my constant powers. So I've just twisted them together and used solder to solder them together just the way I prefer to do it. Um, you can do it all kinds of different ways. You could get waggo nuts, uh, kind of snap, snap locks or crimp connections, all sorts of different variations. But I just do it this way and then I'm just going to take electrical tape and uh, tape everything up and dress my leads. Uh, you're, your mileage may vary however you want to do it, but I found that's worked pretty good for me over the years. Okay, so I set that for a three camera system. Just one of the dip switches down, number two. Kind of sorted out all the wiring there, taped it up, pushed it back into that cavity. I'm just going to test this camera. I've got everything kind of just hooked up loosely in here. So we'll just uh, see what we get here. There we go. It's showing this screen. And we're getting three other cameras. 
rear camera. One side, the other side. Okay, so that's all working. Now I can kind of uh, sew everything up and put all this back together and get to installing the cameras. So I need to mount the side cameras just in front of the door and run the wire in. Now they give you a flat wire so it'll fit between the, the door seam. So I have to get it inside the cab somehow. I did find a spot here that was uh, had a grommet in it. I guess they use it for for wires that are not used in my truck. Anyway, I pulled out that grommet, put a small hole in it so that I can push the wire through there, through that grommet. And I took the, the door sill kick panel just pulled off the door sill down here and that'll get my wire in here so that I can run it through over to there. And on the outside I'm going to mount this camera probably just right there about midway up should give me a good view. So I cleaned off the surface with uh, isopropic alcohol, peeled back the 3M tape and stuck it on there. That's what she's going to look like. And the wire runs through the door. You can see right there and into that grommet. Comes in behind there. The other wires are being strung along here with the rest of my wires. There's kind of a cover there that just pops off. Easy peasy. Then they go up behind here and then I peeled off my pillar and ran it along with the rest of my wires along there. Just uh, zip clipped it in place and then stuck it under the headrest. So I have two wires coming down for the new dash cam there. The power and the video out. Okay, so I can pretty well sew up this side. There's some extra bundles of wire here, but I have a cavity up behind here. I can stuff it back in. So everything will be hidden and out of the way. Then I'll get over to the other side to do the, the other side camera. And then I got to run my uh, length of wire out to the back bumper for that uh, rear camera. Sort of the same deal on the driver's side. I just ran the side camera and the rear camera wires underneath this floor matting material. Pulled off the sill and kick plate here and uh, put the side camera through that same grommet. And then I'm taking the rear wire through the driver's side door and into the back and I'll show you where it's going to go. Oh, and one thing I should mention is uh, where the connectors connect, I usually wrap some electrical tape around them. Then you can see here we've got a white wire. On the other side I had to snip that white wire because these cameras are identical but on that side you have to have the image uh, reversed so when you snip that wire it reverses the image. So if you install it and you're wondering why one side is upside down, you forgot to snip one of the wires. I found a way to get the wire out of the cab and outside. So the wire continued on from the front through the back underneath this cell and back up underneath I have a seat that folds down. And I found a little plastic uh, port, popped it out, actually sits underneath that carpet back there. So I'll be able to run the wire back and under the carpet through this little uh, access point and I'll be able to drop down underneath the, the back of the truck there and run the wire to the very back. So it pops out of a hole on the back of the truck cab and then what I've done is I've brought it in under the bed and I have it uh, strapped to a wire. You can see that uh, that red wire there, that's actually a wire that runs for my DC to DC charger. So what I've done is I've just clipped it to that wire all the way along because that goes to the back tailgate. 
So let me just get to the back and I'll show you where it is hooked up. So under the back of the truck, you can see the spare tire there right under the tailgate. And I just strapped it to some existing uh, OEM wiring for the truck. Wound up a little extra there. And then I had quite a bit of extra of this, the thick wire, because they had, you know, 20 meters of it. So I just have the extra underneath the, the seat of the truck there. And then this goes out and I have it mounted on the other side of my bumper here. I'll show you that. There we are. Comes with a steel bracket here, just screws into it. It's a metal camera. It's all waterproof and everything. And then it has a, a light sensor here. And also it has a, a little LED so it can light stuff up at night. Night sort of night vision. But that should be okay. Give me a good view of the back. And the final job was just to mount the camera. So it comes with a little bracket. Up here has 3M mounting tape. You stick it right to the windshield. And then I stuck the GPS pickup right beside it as well. So all ready to go. It's nicely out of the way. I can't really see it as a driver. And uh, doesn't block my, my vision down there. Just give you a look at what the screen looks like. With the cat, my video camera adjust to it. There we go. So you can see we got uh, the voltage that that the parking monitor is at 12.7 as an indicator there. Shows that the GPS is working. It's got date and time, and it's got the front view. If I tap that, I get the full front view. If I tap that, I see the the other three cameras. Anyway, I think next we'll uh, give you a look at the touch screen and I'll go through all the features and then I'll go out and do some driving tests and we'll give you some uh, footage of, of how it looks. So let's go through the touch screen display and we can get into all the features. Uh, a lot of people might appreciate this compared to the other camera that uses the Wi-Fi app. The one that uses the Wi-Fi app is much more slim so it's a little more stealth in your vehicle. This one kind of hangs down off of the windshield, so it's a little more obvious, but obviously it's either easier to use. Uh, you can see it's showing me a continuous. I press that, I see the front camera right now, it's showing my jeans. <laughs> and then I press here and I can see the, the three back cameras kind of cloudy and dark out today. You won't be able to see very good, it's quite bright. Um, along here we have some quick option buttons. There's volume. Voice guidance disabled. Voice guidance enabled. Voice recording disabled. And down here you can do a manual recording. I think it comes on and records for a certain amount of time. If you just want to quickly do a, a manual recording, hit this little house here. It'll take us to the home screen for all the settings. So you got live view, file list, settings, and about the device. Uh, file list will show all the, all the things that have happened, continuous recording. If there's ever a traffic accident or something happens on the road, It'll come there. Parking is my 24-7 parking. Shows you what's happening around the RV. And it's I have it in time-lapse mode, so everything's moving really fast on the screen. You can see people moving around. So it's basically recording all the time what's happening. I can go and switch it around and see all the, the other cameras as well. You can take the, the, the little uh, SD card out and look at it on your computer as well. And they do have a, a computer PC app that you can install the software on your computer and look at everything on your computer. Uh, what else we got here? Parking incidents. So if your car's truck is sitting there and someone comes along and hits it while it's parked, it'll it'll show that. It'll do a special recording of what happened. There's the manual recording and you can save vehicle videos. Let's go back here. We got uh, a boat device, just some information, your GPS locations and the, what the serial numbers are, stuff like that. And then we have the settings. So camera settings, you can do the, the front camera, you can have three ranges of brightness, dark, bright, mid. Uh, rotate rear camera view if you're going to mount it upside down. And record settings, we have continuous sensitivity. So when you're driving, um, it kind of it kind of does how sensitive it's going to be if you're uh, hitting bumps and stuff. So because I have a, a one ton truck, I keep it at the lowest because I have really stiff suspension, especially without the trailer on, it's kind of can get a little bouncing. So I find the lowest works better for me. Super night vision, you can have it in parking mode or you can have it in continuous mode. And that just pumps up the brightness when you're when you're running around at night. 
uh, parking mode you can set that there's motion detection so if if it senses anybody walking in front of the camera then it'll turn on and record time lapse is it records every few seconds or i think every one second it takes a frame or two seconds and then it stitches them all together in a video so people are moving around like a old-fashioned movie but uh, it saves a lot of space on the car that uses uses less space so you can go longer and then there's energy saving i think it just takes uh, it wakes up and does time lapse not too sure i'll post it i'll post some text once i look it up or you can have it off uh go to the next screen here parking sensitivity mid high highest lowest low that's if someone is going to bump into your vehicle uh, so that it can come on and record that and then off timer that's for the parking mode you can set it for different things three hours six hours 12 hours 48 hours 24 hours i leave it right at two days and then there's battery protection because you know when it's when it's hooked to a constant wire it's constantly pulling on your vehicle battery so so some people uh will disable will have will have battery protection on so that uh it, the thing will actually turn off if your battery gets too low and this is the off voltage settings you can set it i set it at 11.8 and then there's uh winter battery protection you can set certain months that are winter so it's pretty uh, sophisticated as far as that goes and that's one of the features that sets thinkware apart from uh, a lot of the, the cheaper end stuff is, is their really good uh, parking mode settings then we got road safety settings you can put in your vehicle type i have it on truck there's sedan suv uh adas settings i think it's advanced driver assistance system so you can go into that and you got to set your line with the bottom of your hood to get it to all work and then you initialize it it kind of learns as you drive <clears throat> so it does uh lane departure warning system so if you're driving along and you cross the the line it'll make kind of a click click noise so you can set the speed where you want that to come to come on uh it actually works quite well there's front collision warning system so you can set that to different uh sensitivity and then there's low speed front collision warning system and then there's v front vehicle departure warning and that is like you know if you're sitting at a, at a light and you don't quite a, you don't see the car in front of you start moving this thing will make a little chime and tell you hey the car moved get get your butt going and then we have down here system settings so you have english volume off volume on and then this is your automatic uh, advanced drivers assistance settings with different tones off or a more subtle tone system and others well, that's your other tones i just leave it very muted you can calibrate your touch screen here uh, lcd brightness there's dark mid and bright i guess bright would use more battery power and lcd off clock and there's a security LED on the front of this, so you can set that off, or you can set it for up, down, or blink, or random. It just warns somebody that you actually have a camera in your vehicle when they look at it. Time zone, date, self-explanatory, daylight savings, speed, miles or kilometers. Uh, and then the speed stamp, that'll, that'll stamp right on the video what, what your speed was, if you have the, obviously if you have the GPS module. Partition for your memory, you can choose what has priority. I just have it on parking priority. There's different uh, settings for that and you format your card and reset everything so you can do everything right through the touch screen but really once i find once you have everything set up it's set up ready to go and you just go ahead and drive on the side here you have your sd card there there's actually a power button on this side and then your your plugins on top give you a quick look at the finished installation so no wires hanging about or anything. The dash cam up there, wires go disappear up into the headliner. Passenger side camera, hardly even notice it. And then the dash cam sitting right in there next to my other one. Driver's side dash cam side view. And then we'll just go back. I actually have, from my existing system, I actually have a camera sitting up there. That was from my uh, Q800 Pro system. So I actually have six cameras going right now. And then there's the rear camera. So let's get on the road. <laughs> Fourth lap.
that's weird because the backwards. roundabouts go the other yeah. way and you're like oh yeah not only is it a roundabout but it, you're driving on the opposite side of the road going in the other direction <laughs> The brand new suits are all the new employees. Yeah, don't it's hit like one of them. so bright. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth lap. That's weird. Because, because the roundabouts go the other way. And you're like, oh. Yeah. Not only is it a roundabout, but it, you're driving on the opposite side of the road going in the other direction. <laughs> The brand new suits are all the new employees. Yeah, don't it's hit like one of them. so bright. Yeah. So there's the installation the video and some quick demo footage for you. Um, so far, I'm pretty impressed. The, the picture's clear, just like my last Thinkware camera. Although the rear camera seems to be a little bit dark, um, I have reported that to Thinkware, and uh, I think they said they can, uh, they're going to retune that uh, external camera for a little more brightness. Anyway, I'm going to use this for a few weeks and I'll come back with my uh, full review and go through all my likes and dislikes, that sort of thing, like I did before. Till next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks. Oh, by the way, if you want to see the older video, the Q800 Pro, I'll put a link to that.